what's going on there guys we back with another one and we got to talk about this chris paul thing as far as coming off of the bench or whatever he's going to do what his role is going to be with the golden state warriors and people are saying that this is going to be a tough adjustment for chris paul only time will tell but i have my theories on that i feel like at this juncture in his career he wants to win and he wants to win big and he knows you know he's the aging chris paul and if He's just sat back and analyzed some of the things that's happened. You know, he's had in injuries with his hamstring and his legs as the season progressed. And this, him coming off the bench would be a favor for him in, in, a, in sort of a way. You know, for him to come out there, perform at a high level, but limit the minutes, let him see the game because he's a true floor general so the things he's seeing on the court he can apply them when he gets out on the floor so i think chris paul's basketball iq may be kind of underrated with how people are projecting this on him as he's not going to be able to fit in with the warriors but um let's check out what chris paul said we're gonna peep what a man and paul pierce had to say about it and i'll be back with more let's peep it You'd be coming off the bench, playing with a second unit that's a lot younger than this, the Warriors of the past have been, of J.K. and Moses. Just what do you think of, of their depth, their their bench players that you might be playing alongside? Uh, you coaching? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I don't know what is what the situation is going to be yet. You know what I mean? So I think that'll be for us to, to figure out once we get going. You've never come off the bench in your entire career. Is that something that you'd be willing to do? Um, like I said, it'll be a conversation for us when camp starts or whatnot. But me and Steve have talked or whatnot. But I, you know, that ain't something that you'd be like, "What up, man? Where you start? You coming up? You know what I mean?" So I think we'll figure all that stuff out in camp. Chris, you've never been afraid to throw that lob pass throughout your career. What do you think about the, the biggest sort of jarring moment of summer league so far? Wasn't anything that happened on the court? Wasn't Victor Wembanyama? It was walking into a game and seeing Steph Curry and Chris Paul sitting next to each other. Oh, that looked kind of weird, didn't because, it? Because, like, I just, you know, that obviously you've known for, for all this time they're going to play together. It's been weeks now, but, like, you yeah. just see them sitting next to each other chatting it up. That looked weird. Me. That's one where I don't know how that's going to work. What I do y'all think? Don't. What do I think about that dynamic? Oh, man, that's going to be I mean, interesting. There's, there's a lot of nasty shit from but, back then. But to be honest with you, Rachel, I don't even think it's about the nastiness. It's about is Chris Paul ready to accept the role that you're not Chris Paul anymore? Like, you come in there, mm -hmm. the ball's not in your hands 80% of the time. We're not running a traditional offense. We're, we're doing a lot of motion. And they're looking at him like, oh, he could be like Sean Livingston was for us. Who Sean Livingston early in his career was his yeah, yeah. great point guard, but then through the injuries, he comes to Golden State. But Sean he, was coming from a very different mindset exactly. when he got He's to Golden State. Like, I'm happy to just still be playing right. and being in a good team with good guys or whatever. Chris is coming from two years ago, he was in the finals. And now all of a sudden you say, hey, you got to come off the bench and you got to move it, be but, quick with your decision making. Let me tell you something. This is going to be one of the toughest years of Chris's career. Mm -hmm. You think so? Just mentally. You know why? Because you... <clears throat> And I had to go through this. Mm. Now, your your whole career, you're a starter. You got the ball in your hands. Now, you got to make the adjustment mentally, like, and you're older to coming off the bench. Mm -hmm. So now that's a different type of preparation. Mm. So you might not, you might come in off the bench and you don't really got a lot of time to warm up. As an older player, that's difficult. So, yeah, man, I see that a little different. I think Chris Paul, he's coming in to unlock some of the players that, I feel like their abilities aren't used or even they like they don't have a chance to fit in with what Steph and Clay and Draymond is out there doing. Chris Paul, more conventional point guard, I think will serve Jonathan Kaminga. You know, it, it, it could do wonders for his career. Give him the confidence he needs. He has the athleticism. He has the ability to guard. He has all of these things, right? But if you're not confident on the offensive end, you feel like, you know, as soon as you mess up, you're coming out. And I think he can get that part of Kaminga's game, you know what I'm saying, to the point where he has enough confidence to be afraid to fail and feel like he's still valuable to the team. Because you saw, like, Iguodala over there coaching up Kaminga at different times this year. You saw the whole thing that happened with Wiseman. If they had him now, 
he would look a lot better with Chris Paul. So I, I don't know if coming off the bench is going to be as big as everybody's making it because I feel like Chris Paul will finish some games just depending on how he's playing. Obviously, you want Chris Paul for some late game situations if you're bringing him in. You feel like uh, his style of play, his his heady plays and his um, – you know, just his experience is needed down the stretch. You also going to have stretches probably where Steph may be out of game here or there. And so you don't miss him so much. You have Chris Paul to put there. You know what I'm saying? So it, he ain't like it's just you're on the bench for all 82 games. You know what I'm saying? Or however many games he plays this year. But they're looking – for a change in pace, but a more conventional point guard off the bench. I, I don't I don't agree with him as the Sean Livingston role. That's not even what they're bringing him in for. And the reason I say that is because Sean Livingston was six foot seven. He guarded wings, he guarded threes, he guarded, you know, point guards, obviously. Um, you know, so and, and he was one of those guys who could make some plays above the rim and everything. So no, you don't look at Chris like Livingston, what you may get from them both is mid-range, you know, offense. Yes, that's possible, but as far as style of play, that's not what they're looking forward to. I think some of the things Livingston used to do, especially defensively, they're hoping Chris Paul unlocks that on Jonathan Kaminga as far as getting him confident and engaged on the offensive end where he's confident and he's able to extend his minutes to make big plays on the defensive end and really show his value. So somebody like that would fill some of the the, the uh, void left by like Sean Livingston and them years ago and Andre Iguodala and those guys. So, yeah, man, I think it's going to work. I think Chris Paul – and let me say another thing, man. Chris Paul and Steph Curry do not have beef, people. These guys are close. I'm going to say this one more time. If you're a young guard that came up in North Carolina after 2003, Chris Paul was the guy you looked up to. I don't care who you are. That goes for uh, Steph Curry. That goes for John Wall. That goes for Dennis Smith Jr. That goes for Eric Maynard. Whatever other guard came out the state. You know, Chris Paul was a reference point of what you wanted to be. And Chris Paul did a good job having his CP3 camp and guards coming through and getting his tutelage. So at the very least... Chris Paul is respected. Now, there may be some competitive things that happen on the floor, but as far as reverence for Chris Paul, nobody can take that from him and his place in North Carolina's history. So I just wanted to put that out there, but I want to know what you guys think in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe until next time. Peace. <music>